Hey guys, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techie. Uh, so as all of you know, Computex is going on right now and that means all of the companies are releasing new products. Uh, we saw Intel's flop of a keynote uh, where they basically lied to everyone. Um, but that's not what this video is about. Uh, and I'm not a fanboy either way. I've got one Intel system and one AMD system. Uh, I just think it was a tad bit shady what they did. Um, but again, that's neither here nor there. That's not what this video is about. Um, I'm exceptionally excited because I got a new product today. And this is, when I say new, I mean brand new. It was just released yesterday. Uh, and I cannot wait to share it with you guys. Um, I just picked up the new Vega 56 Nano Edition. Uh, so this is made by Power Color. I'm not sure yet if any other companies are going to be releasing a Vega 56 Nano. Um, so let's go ahead and just take a look at the specs of this card. Um, so it does not differ much from a normal uh, Vega 56. Uh, you do get uh, the full number of stream processors, so 3,584. Uh, that's, that's what you get in a normal Vega 56. Um, still 8 gigabytes of HBM2 running at 800 megahertz. Um, still exactly what you get with, with a normal Vega 56. Um, where we start to differ a little bit is power and core clock speed. So this card, instead of having two 8-pin connectors like most Vega 56s, I think all other Vega 56s have, uh, this has an 8-pin and a 6-pin, so a little bit less power going to it. And they've dropped clock speeds by about, it depends on which card you compare it to, but about 100 megahertz off the base clock and somewhere around 150 megahertz off of the boost clock. So this is running a base clock of 1156 and a boost clock of 1471. Uh, first impressions is it's incredibly heavy. Uh, it's got some heft to it. Very, very big heat sink. Unfortunately, there is no back plate on this card. Um, but even without a back plate, I think it still is very nice looking. Um, I, I have always loved AMD's retention mechanism on the back um, that the four main screws go through to hold the cooler onto the die. Um, I've always liked that. I think that looks really good. Um, the front side, so this is what you'll see uh, facing out of your case. Uh, we've got the 8-pin and the 6-pin uh, that I talked about earlier. And in contrast to the R9 Nano, uh, we don't have any type of branding on the side right here. No, no Radeon, no anything. Um, moving around to the front, obviously just a single fan. Um, it's a pretty small fan actually, smaller than I would have expected, but um, the whole card itself is, is very small. Uh, moving to I.O., uh, we have one HDMI and three DisplayPort connections. All right, so we've relocated downstairs uh, to my mini ITX rig. This is a uh, Titan XP and 8700K. Uh, we're going to pull the Titan out and replace it with our Nano uh, and do a little bit of performance testing. I do apologize for the audio. It's a bit of an acoustic nightmare down here because this is technically uh, my kitchen. So there is a pretty wicked uh, reverberation going on. All right, so I've got the card installed and I just finished installing the Radeon drivers. Uh, let's go ahead and see what our idle temps are. Uh, so it looks like 34C uh, on the die. Let's see what our memory is at. Uh, memory temperature looks like 34, so right about the same. Uh, so this is at idle with the factory fan curve and it looks like right now our fan percentage is at 41 percent and that is just a hair over 1500 rpm. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm actually downloading Unigen Superposition in the background. Uh, we're going to do a run of that and see how toasty this card gets. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and see if we can do some overclocking to finish this video up. All right, so I've got Unigen Superposition downloaded. Uh, we're going to run at 1080p Extreme 
Again, this is going to be on all factory settings. Uh, have not messed with the clock speeds uh, or the fan um, or voltage or power limit for that matter. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this and see how she does. So right off the rip, it's running at about uh, 1340 megahertz on the core. Uh, HBM is running at 800 megahertz. Um, fan speed looks like about 55% uh, and our temp is steadily climbing. Uh, we've already dropped uh, down into the 1200 megahertz range which is considerably slower than your run-of-the-mill Vega 56 uh, but that is to be expected I mean they had to uh, they had to do something to try to tame the temperatures on this card considering how small it is so we're getting close to the end of the test here and there's just a couple things that I wanted to point out uh, frame rates have been in the low 20s dipping into the teens uh, now before you go crazy with your pitchforks uh, 1080p extreme on this benchmark is pretty tough on cards um, even my Titan XP has uh, relatively low frame rates in this benchmark um, temperatures have not been that bad we did get up to the 70s but our core clock did drop down uh, to 7 800 megahertz uh, so our score on this run was just over 3000 uh, so let's go ahead and compare that online and see what it looks like all right so I finally got two scores that were comparable with our card uh, it was actually all the way on page 29 uh, so our score was 3043 uh, which is gonna put it right here uh, there is a GTX 980 here and an R9 290X Tri-X um, let's go ahead and look and see uh, so it does look like the temperature on this card got up to 82 C so I don't think it was liquid cooled we are near some 1070s so this 3104 and 3092 both of those were 1070s one an MSI one an EVGA uh, we've got a 980 Ti here um, 780 dual classified um, here actually is an R9 Fury X Nano which is interesting to see uh, and two up from that is another Nano uh, it does look like this one is liquid cooled yes both of them are liquid cooled um, so you're getting right in the neighborhood of 1070 um, there are some 1080s when we get up in the 3400 mark um, so, so not bad it is kind of disheartening to see um, a liquid cooled Fury X Nano um, outscore us but obviously this person was overclocking um, so let's go ahead and jump into some overclocking and see what we can do with this card so this is about my fourth or fifth benchmark run and what I'm noticing is that when I overclock it actually runs worse um, <clears throat> another concerning thing that I noticed was the memory clock speed um, so it is actually bouncing around <clears throat> in the high 600 low 700 range um, inside the benchmark it actually showed 500 a couple times but I'm thinking that was um, not accurate um, let's see here core clock speed was all the way down in some instances to 650 megahertz um, I did do a negative 12 value on the voltage um, maxed out the power limit plus 50 um, just barely bumped the clock speed I've got it set to 1625 memory clock to 925 and for all intents and purposes maxed out the fan speed and unfortunately the way AMD has set this card up it appears that even before it gets extremely hot um, it is set up to throttle those speeds hard um, so unfortunately there's really not <clears throat> excuse me there's really not any overclocking to be had um, I tried upping core voltage um, like I said I did go uh, negative tried to undervolt that did not help either 
Um, one thing I've noticed is I've put in lower values for core voltage and um, they, they don't seem to set right. Like I just put in negative 20 for a value and it bumped it back up to negative 18. Uh, I had ran negative 15 a couple times and it had bumped it back up to negative 12. So uh, just something to note, it's a, a little wonky with the software, at least with MSI Afterburner. Um, but unfortunately I would consider overclocking um, not a success with this card. Um, but you have to keep in mind what it is. It is an exceptionally small card. Um, I am kind of disappointed with the clock speeds though. Um, uh, I just, I feel like AMD has really choked this card, um, in regards to throttling it for temperatures. Um, I mean, we weren't even close to the temp limit of 85 that's set, uh, and it was throttling well under a thousand megahertz on the core. Um, and like I said, the memory clock actually looking at it now it was actually bouncing between five and seven hundred um, which is is very poor in my opinion all right guys so unfortunately I am disappointed with this card uh, I feel like AMD has played it a little too safe with the temperatures um, maybe there's something I'm missing uh, but when I tried to overclock obviously as you saw that was not possible um, I tried undervolting, I tried overvolting. Uh, the memory was running as low as 500 megahertz. Um, it is HBM2, so that's that's quicker than it sounds, but it's still 300 megahertz lower than what its uh, what its stated speed is. Um, core clock speeds were dropping down in the 700 megahertz range, um, as you saw in Unigen superposition. Uh, benchmarks were on par with, I, I think it's unfair to compare it to the older cards that were overclocked and water cooled on there, so let's say it was just shy of GTX 1070, um, now that was the bottom, you know, 5% of 1070s on there, because we were about three or four hundred points away from the, from the slowest 1070 on there, and I would assume that's you know, one of the cheaper 1070s that you could buy. But, um, nevertheless, I feel like that's probably the better place to spend your money. Um, I would go out, uh, you know, I mean, this card was $450. For $450, um, prices have started to come down on GPUs. I would go out and look for a, uh, you know, something like a Zotac Mini 1070. Um, or maybe one of the Gigabyte single fan uh, GTX 1070s. Um, unfortunately, I think AMD has missed the mark with this one. Um, and that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we've got the water cooling build up next. It was initially going to be an all AMD build, uh, but I've ditched the Vega 64 for a Titan XP. Um, I just couldn't help myself. I know I'm a bad person. Um, but stay tuned for that. It's actually already done. I'm staring at it as we speak. I've just got to get the video edited. Um, so like I said, I hope you enjoyed this one. Make sure to click subscribe if you haven't already and leave us a like if you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.